Welcome back, I'm Jill with thecarefreekitchen.com and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you an amazing caramel apple recipe. We love to make these every fall when the apples are fresh and I'm super excited to share this recipe with you. So follow along and I'll show you step by step how to make caramel apples. Okay, so before we get started, be sure to like, subscribe and follow me here and um, it'll keep you updated on all my new recipes. Okay, so to get started on caramel apples, a big part of the process is preparing our apples. Most apples come with like a really thick, kind of waxy layer on the outside of the apples. If you don't have the wax off the outside of the apples, the warm caramel will melt kind of slump off of the apples. So I'll show you a few tricks on how to get rid of that like waxy coat so that your caramel sticks really well to the outside of your apple. So I've gone ahead and rinsed all of these. So one of the things you can do is just grab a towel and you can take some of that wax off. It'll come off there on your rag. You can also put them in like a big bowl of water with maybe like a fourth of a cup of white vinegar and warm water and that will also help. But actually this one looks really good. And it's good if you dry, hand dry them with a towel and then you just let them sit also for a little while to make sure they are really really dry. That is one of the things that can cause you some problems when making crumbled apples. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this for all of the apples and then we'll get started. Okay, so the next step of the process is um, deciding what kind of sticks to put in there. So I have a few options. Okay, these are some sticks that I found at just like Hobby Lobby and they're cute. They're like little square sticks. So there's those, or you can just use like your regular popsicle sticks and those will work too. And then the next one, look how cute these are. So you can just go out to your bushes or your tree at your house and you might think, oh, that's kind of gross. You know, it's like a stick. Why would you put a stick in there? But nobody eats the core anyway. So wash your stick off if you need to and then you can just put it right into the center. Okay, I'm gonna try it right in here. There we go. Perfect, look how cute that is. That's adorable, right? Oh, and also the best apples to use. So I am using Granny Smith apples. Those are the green ones here. And then I also like to do some red ones because I know some people really like red apples. They aren't quite as tart as the Granny Smith, but they are so delicious too. So any kind of like a tart apple that you wanna use, it's gonna be great. Okay, there's that one and then I just like to keep it down and put it right in there. Perfect. Alrighty, now we are ready to make our caramel. Okay, so to get started on the caramel, um, this is a really simple caramel recipe. Nothing complicated about it. The most important thing here is just to stir. I know it kind of takes a little bit of a long time, but with the ingredients that we're using, you only need to stir for like maybe eight to 12 minutes, depending on how fast you cook it. Um, I would cook it pretty slow, like medium low heat. Um, once your, your mixture comes to a boil, um, turn it down to medium low so that you can cook it slowly. And then I like to just use a wooden spoon to stir my caramel. Okay, so for the ingredients in the caramel, this is what you're gonna need. So I have a cup of butter, cup of brown sugar, cup of sugar, one can of sweetened condensed milk, a cup of caro, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and a splash of vanilla. I'm going to add my butter here and we can just let this melt. And if you're making a caramel recipe that has cream in it, it's gonna take probably twice as long as if you use the sweetened condensed milk. So this is why I use this version, is because it turns out just as good and it's so much faster. Okay, and then I'm just gonna melt this a little bit. Okay, and then to the butter, I'm going to add my cup of sugar, cup of brown sugar, my caro syrup, and then my can of sweetened condensed milk. Okay, and then we're just going to stir this and so it's really smooth and then let it come up to a boil. Also, I forgot to add that you want to be sure that you are cooking this in a non-stick skillet. 
our nonstick pan. Um, you can use a regular pan, but this just um, gives a little bit more room for error. The biggest problem with caramel is that it can scorch easily. So be sure you are using a nonstick pan. Okay, so my caramel is getting close. I did, however, move to a flat spoon. I forgot, it's been about a year since I've made these, but um, you wanna just use a flat spoon so you can scrape the bottom of the pan. Okay, so I like to scrape it um, one way and then go around and then do it the other way. And that way you are sure to scrape the entire bottom of the pan. And then I also have my thermometer here and we wanna get right there to the softball stage. That's about 240 degrees. And I've been stirring this for about eight minutes and I'm gonna to continue to stir it for probably another couple minutes. And if you don't have a candy thermometer, you can just do this kind of by hand and I'll show you how to check for the softball stage with water. So I have a bowl of just cold water here. I'm gonna try and do this while I keep stirring. So to check this, I am just going to get a little bit of caramel and pour it in there. Okay, this is a good sign. If it immediately disintegrates, that means it's not ready. So when it's softball stage, it will actually hold the ball shape in your hand. And this one is like just a little bit too soft. So we need to continue to cook this. Um, this is a good time to add just a little bit of salt to the caramel. I don't know, maybe like an eighth of a teaspoon just to cut the sweetness just a little bit. Okay, it's probably 220 degrees right now. So it has just another couple of minutes. So if you don't get your caramel quite cooked enough, it won't stay on the apple, but then we don't wanna get it overcooked so that um, it's like so chewy and it hurts your teeth when you eat it. So to get that soft caramel, we want it about 230 to 240, but don't go over 240 degrees. Okay, here we go. I will show you what softball stage looks like here. So there we go. That's just about perfect. That'll stay on our apple without being too tough and without falling off the edges. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this off the heat and it's going to need to cool down for just like five minutes. Okay, so while my caramel is cooling for just a minute, um, this is what you need to prepare for your crumbled apples. And you can use parchment paper, but sometimes the parchment paper tears when you try and take the caramel apple off. So what I like to do is just get a stick of butter and you're going to want to cover this really well. So it should be heavily greased. And then I'm going to put my caramel right here. Okay, so the way that I like to do it is I like to just tilt it on its side and then I'm going to roll the apple right there in that caramel. Okay, and up above, like by the stem, I like to just roll it and not put it all the way on the stem because then that way you can tell what kind of an apple you're eating. And then I just let it sit here for a second and then roll it a little bit and I'll put it right on top on the greased cookie sheet. So you kind of have this window between when caramel is too hot. If it's too hot, it's just going to melt down off of your apple. And if it's too cool, it's gonna be so thick and you won't get very many caramel apples out of it. So that's why if you get it to like 230, just right under the softball stage, it'll be great. Okay, and if you get down to kind of the bottom of the pan, just use a rubber spatula Kind of get it off the sides there. Okay, and if you need to, if your caramel cools too much before you're done dipping your apples, you can heat your caramel up just a little bit too. Okay, we've got spot on our pan here for one more. So this recipe made enough for 12 apples. And if they were a little bit smaller, you could probably do 15. There's a little bit of caramel left in here but I'll just put that in my fridge and then my kids can have caramel with their apples, the sliced apples sometime. Okay, so the carameled apples are all ready here. They're gonna take probably 30 minutes to an hour to cool. So while those carameled apples are cooling, I'm gonna show you um, our favorite way to decorate the carameled apples. 
Um, I have some Butterfinger hair. I'm just going to unwrap five or six of them in here and maybe I'll do this. Break them up just a little bit. And then we'll put them in this bowl here. All right, there we go. That is ready when our caramels are cool a little bit. Okay, and the next thing I'm gonna do is I have these candy wafers. It's like white chocolate. And I just poured it into a microwave safe dish here. And I'm going to heat this on 50% in the microwave for about a minute to begin with. And then I will stir it and then we'll do 30 second increments, stirring in between until all the white chocolate is melted. Okay, do you see how there's little chunks of the white chocolate? You want to quit heating it as soon as you can just see a little bit of white chunks. And then you just continue to stir it for just like 30 seconds or so and the chocolate that's already melted will melt the bigger chunks in there. So you can stir it and see it's almost done here and now it's smooth, it's ready to go. To do the apple, I'm just going to lift this up and I'm just gonna use a spoon here and drizzle a little bit of this white chocolate on. And then we like to put this little bit of Butterfinger on the caramel apples. And then we just put it right back down. And since this is buttered, it comes off so nice and easy. You just rock it back and forth a little bit and it comes right off. Just gonna drizzle this a little bit and then put a little bit of this Butterfinger on it. And what a cute tree is that. All right guys, here is my recipe for how to make carameled apples step by step. These carameled apples are perfect to put in little cellophane bags with some cute little ribbon. We usually cut them with just an apple cutter and then you get these perfect slices and they're covered in caramel and white chocolate and those little bits of Butterfinger. They are so fun to make and just about anybody can pull it off. I hope you enjoyed this recipe from thecarefreekitchen.com. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow me on social media and I will show you all kinds of fun and easy recipes your entire family will love. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.